Hi, I'm Teresa with Inflectra. I'll be providing a series of short videos to help you get started using Spira. This includes all the additions of the system, Spira Test, Spira Team, and Spira Plan. In today's video, I'll demonstrate how to create test cases. So let's get started. Once requirements have been defined, you can begin working on the test plan. Here we see the product requirements so far. In module one, we see user entry, modification, and deletion. And in module two, there's one about notifications. If we take a look at our test coverage column, you can see that we currently have no test coverage. To enter in new test cases, we're going to click test cases from the drop down artifact menu. Here's our empty test case list page with the toolbar at the top and the filter row just below. Spire organizes test cases in folders. So here at the left, we can click the Add button to create a new folder. I'll call this one My Functional Tests. And I'll click on it so that the new test cases are filed in that new folder. To create a new test case, I'm going to use the New Test Case button. And now I can enter in a test case name. Here I can use Save and New since I'm entering multiple entries. I'm going to take a moment to build out the additional test cases to cover those four requirements. So here I have my four test cases for my four requirements. Now let's click on the link to enter some additional information for the test case. Here on the test case list page, you can see the information is organized in tabs. On the overview tab, I can enter a detailed description and click save. And now I can scroll down to my test steps section. There is a setting in the product administration testing settings, which allows a default step to be created with the test case creation. Spira records results at the step level, so one step is required to execute a test case. Here we can just edit this default step. You can see that I have three sections to enter information. Description, expected result, and sample data. Let's go ahead and enter that first step. I'll save that step. And to enter additional steps, I can use the Insert Step button here. And here I can choose to define some sample data for the tester to use. I'll do save and new and enter one additional step. Now 
and save. So now we have some steps for the test case. The next thing we want to do is to link this to the requirement to establish that traceability. To do that, we're going to select our requirement coverage tab and add. And we can navigate through the different requirements. Our list is fairly short, so we don't really need to navigate. So there's that must allow user entry. And I'll hit save. Let's go ahead and establish requirement coverage for the remaining test cases. To do that, we can e use this left navigation area here. And the last one for notifications. Great. Let's head back to our requirement list page and take a look at that test coverage column. Now you can see if I hover over the test coverage column, I can see that I have one test cut covering each of the requirements. The gray bar indicates that the test case hasn't been run yet. And you can see that the test case coverage is rolling up to the parent requirements. The final thing we'll want to do is to assign the test cases to releases that they can test. If we take a look at our release column here on the requirements list page, we see that all the requirements are set to be released in 1.0 with the first two requirements in Sprint 1 and the second two requirements in Sprint 2. So let's go ahead and add all of the test cases to release 1.0. To do that, we're going to go back to our test cases list page, tick the checkbox to select all, and using the tools function here, select add to release. We'll select release 1.0 and click add. Now we'll click on the detail page to add those sprint coverage as well. Click on the Releases tab here and the Add button. Now we can click on Sprint 1, but you typically want to include previous functionality in the successive sprints to ensure regression coverage. So we'll want to test this again in Sprint 2. Hit Save. We'll do the same thing for the test for that modification. We'll test it in, in Sprint 1 and Sprint 2. And for the remaining two requirements, we'll add the Sprint 2 coverage. Now if we go back to our test list page, you can see this releases filter here in the right can show us the test plan for each release or sprint. Thanks for watching this Spira test case video today. We have more Spira explainer videos for you to explore on this channel. Check them out now.